on today's free agency preview. LA, San Antonio, Dallas, where will LaMarcus Aldridge sign on the dotted line? Will DeAndre Jordan actually leave the Clippers? Pork and dog, keep him in LA. And LeBron is very likely staying in Cleveland, but what about Love and the rest of his teammates? It's Tuesday, June 30th. The starter starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to the Starters NBA Free Agency Fever, Frenzy, Freakout, whatever you want to call it. Whether you're listening to the podcast, watching us on YouTube, joining us on NBA TV, we're very, very happy to have you. I'm Jay Skeetson, alongside me, as always, that's Tass Mellis. That doc impression killed me. Don't count on me to talk to you. You're a little hoarse already? Oh, yeah! To my right, Starters blog editor, Trey Kirby. Hey! Hey! Hey Oh, and finally, the international man of mystery, taking it to the max, Lee Ellis. Friend. Mm. Lee Lee. All right, just hours away from the start of the NBA's free agency period. It will officially get underway at midnight tonight, Eastern time, of course. A couple key questions heading in tonight. I'm going to tackle a few of them here on tonight's show. First one, it's an obvious one. Probably the biggest fish that's at least realistically available. Where is LaMarcus Aldridge going to go? He's got his fair share of suitors here tonight. It sure feels like he's leaving Portland, and I think Portland knows that. And I think San Antonio is a great place if you want to win, but I think the lure of L.A. is too much for LaMarcus Aldridge. I think LaMarcus Aldridge will end up on the Los Angeles Lakers. I don't see him going from small market to small market. He wants the limelight. If you've watched him or listened to him throughout his career, he's mentioned not getting that recognition in Portland through his 10 years. He told Washington Post in April, put me in New York or Chicago, and of course, it would be a bigger deal made of it, Mm -hmm. of his career. I think guys who do less definitely get more hype than me at times, but I'm used to it. And you see all the suitors that he's gonna meet with starting at midnight, they're all gonna go to his house in LA. Mm -hmm. Let me mention that. And the Los Angeles Lakers are first on the bill. The Rockets, the Spurs, the Suns, the Mavs, the Raptors, the Knicks. He's meeting basically with a third of the league. He's not meeting with (laughs) Portland because He knows what he's getting with Portland, but I just feel like he's going to a big market. From a small market to a big market, I don't see the move to San Antonio. Obviously, he respects everything that San Antonio is, but I don't see him doing that. Uh, That's odd to me because you would think he does want to win, too, Mm -hmm. which would come into play in the Lakers. They were no doubt going to be better with, of course, their draft picks and Julius Randle coming back there and Kobe hopefully healthy, but they're not going to be on the level of the Spurs. No, of course not. always win 50 games. Hands in, hands in. So well, Marcus is 30 years old. He doesn't have a lot of time to wait for Julius Randle to become very good, for D'Angelo Russell to become very yeah. good. And when you're talking about the limelight, he's certainly going to get more noticed in Los Angeles than Portland, but he's still going to be behind Kobe. And by the time D'Angelo Russell's good, it's going to be D'Angelo Russell's team. Yeah. But I think once Kobe is gone, which is pretty soon, this will be his team, and he'll get the recognition for turning this team around, which won't happen the same way in San Antonio. Although, obviously, San Antonio is very appealing because, as you mentioned, Skeets, he goes there... Are they championship favorites? I mean, they're right there. They're co-favorites with the Cavs and Warriors if he's there. So the whole table agrees, though, that LaMarcus Aldridge doesn't really care the most about the money because if he did, he would very likely want to stay with the Blazers, get that five-year, $108 million type dollar deal. Now, I know the cap explosion in the next coming years is going to change everything, and this could be a very wacky free agency period because of these coming years, and again, those explosions jumping up and up and up. So we don't think that... He wants to that five years. He wants to either go to a bigger market or go to a team like the Spurs that win. What do you think? Luke? I think as well at this stage of his career, he's looking more to contend for a championship. Yeah. I don't think he's finding that in Portland right now. I think money's important to him, but it's not the top of his priority list. I think if he goes to San Antonio, he's going to get pretty much everything he wants there while giving a little bit back. He's still going to get his touches. He might not average 23 and 10 where he was this season, but he's going to get pretty close to that. He's going to get near max money, maybe not quite there because the San Antonio Spurs, in order to land him, actually have to get a little bit creative with their roster. A little bit creative? Lot they have creative, to get yeah. very creative well, with their roster. Apparently making moves today trying to get uh, that Brendan Haywood contract from the Cleveland Cavaliers to help facilitate it. But I think also in San Antonio, he knows, as you mentioned, Skeets, you'll get 50 wins no matter what, and you're going to be likely in the top four or pretty close to it next season. So I think that ticks three pretty important boxes for Lamar. Yeah, you know, by all reports, uh, Spurs, of course, we saw that list that uh, David Aldridge was reporting on NBA.com. They're going to meet with them. Uh, is it going to be Popovich or is he going to be too tired and just go to bed, <laughs> as he is reportedly <laughs> saying today? Yeah, real I Ellis type pop, I feel you, man. <laughs> You know, yeah. Duncan, possibly Parker showing up there with the rings to try and entice him. But they do have to get creative uh, if they want to have at least that close to max yeah. money to throw at LaMarcus Aldridge. It starts really with Duncan and Ginobili. Because of their cap holds, 
that comes into play with your cap, the room that you have available. So they actually have to very quickly, to some extent, get Duncan and Ginobili, if Ginobili's gonna continue to play on these below market deals, to clear those cap holds. Duncan's like a 15.5 million yeah. cap hold. They're gonna hope they can get him, what, six, seven million, maybe a two year type deal? A vet minimum, maybe, who knows? It's well, yeah, it's up in the air. Then, still would have to likely trade like a Thiago Splitter or a Boris Dia. And then, oh yeah, Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green are also free agents here, so that comes into play as well. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of juggling that they're gonna have to do and do it well, like timed up well, because all these other teams, of course, are meeting with LaMarcus Aldridge. So it's not going to be easy for the Spurs. Yeah, and especially Tim Duncan and Tony Parker in that room with him in Los Angeles, it's going to be hard to turn down those Ooh, guys. Definitely. You look across at Tim Duncan, everything that he's achieved, and LaMarcus, obviously the appeal there for him to go do that. And if, if uh, LaMarcus goes to San Antonio, there's no way Duncan retires. That oh, definitely right? not. I mean, those two will, will go after it together. And it seems like a pretty good fit, especially from the Duncan perspective, too, because back in 2003, from his early career to 2003, he was playing what is basically going to be the LaMarcus Aldridge role. He'll shift to the David Robinson role and right. kind of mm. hand over the franchise to a guy who seems to be a pretty good dude, who likes playing basketball, and who's going to work to get hard or to, to get better. And I just kind of think that San Antonio is the perfect fit for LaMarcus Aldridge. He'll fit right in their system. Lee, you're saying 23 and 10 isn't likely, but why not? I feel like they'll give him a ton of touches and he'll be ready for it. Yeah, I mean, I think he'll get close to that. I think just with the way the Spurs system is, and especially with Kawhi Leonard taking on a bigger role in the offense, he may not get around that, but I think he's not going to be too far off it. Uh, either way, I think as well, because he's from Texas, this certainly appeals to him. He's going to be a lot closer sure. to home. He's going to have a chance to win. He's going to get paid. He's going to get looks. I think it's a really perfect situation for uh, him. Again, it, it is interesting, though, with the Spurs, sort of the contracts and the cap holds. You know, we talked about Duncan and Ginobili, but the Kawhi Leonard, they're going to throw max money at this mm -hmm. guy. They're, they're going to give him whatever he wants. He's one of the youngest, most talented young guys in the league. But they're actually going to try and get him, in theory, again, to get LaMarcus near max money. They're going to say, Kawhi, can you chill out for a little bit here in this little July 1st uh -huh. to 10th sort of period here while we try and figure us all, all this out. Like, they want him to sit on his $7.2 million, $7 million cap hold instead of, of course, big, signing him yeah. to a big deal right now, and that's going to uh, convolute things. And then there's Danny Green. Danny Green may not even come into play here, and they might have to let him go. This so would you, I guess I'll throw this at you. Would you prefer LaMarcus Aldridge and let's say Thiago Splitter or Danny Green Boris Dia and Thiago Splitter. Is that a no-brainer? Like, keep your same team together with Green in the mix or go Aldridge and no Danny Green? I think Aldridge is... is yeah, for sure. Simple as that. He, yeah, and he, again, he doesn't get the recognition that he deserves in, in Portland, and I think that's one thing in the favor of L.A. And L.A. is not a pushover of a franchise by any means. People sort of lump it in with the New York Knicks, but L.A., doesn't strike out very often. Yes, the last couple of years have been bad after getting Dwight Howard and then injuries sort of played into that. But this is a, a franchise that always gets guys. They've made the playoffs 51 of the last 57 years. That is not the New York Knicks. Mm. They get guys. There is an allure there. Obviously, he has a house there. There's the weather there. That is a big factor. Everybody doesn't want to talk about the weather. Yeah, it's boring, but it's a big factor. And LaMarcus Aldridge has a home there. I mean, that is going to play into it. And again, this guy led the league in field goals last year. I mean, he is a bucket oh, getter. And I'm not sure he gets that same limelight in San Antonio that he talks about over and over and over again through the last 10 years. But what? I think he'll compensate that for the chance Possibly, that he's going to yeah. be contending for a championship pretty much every oh, season yeah. he's in San Antonio. He will improve the Lakers, there's no doubt about it, but the Lakers will still be battling to make the playoffs. Yeah, he's basically saying if he goes to the Lakers, this year's a write-off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're not going to get much better coming into this season. It's more like looking forward to 16-17. It is pretty crazy, though. I mean, we showed you that list. He can pick the Mavs. He can pick the Spurs, the Rockets. Mm -hmm. He can go east if he wants to possibly go to the Toronto Raptors, a team that would love to have him. I go mean, north, baby. LaMarcus Aldridge, <laughs> sitting pretty right now, can basically decide not only which team he wants to go to, but really what type of contract he yeah. wants to. Maybe he just wants your sort of two-year second player option deal and can go into the big cap. And uh, where he chooses to go on this first night of free agency is going to kind of determine a lot of what happens for every other the, team. The dominoes will start falling absolutely right. Well, we got to take a break. Lots more, of course, still to talk about here with free agency. When we come back, are the Cavs in any danger of losing any of their free agents? We'll break that down and a whole lot more. You're watching this right Welcome back to the Starters, where we're tackling some key questions heading into the NBA free agents period. Tonight at midnight Eastern time, we had talked a little bit about LaMarcus Aldridge. Let's talk about another big guy, DeAndre Jordan. Do you think DJ stays with the Clippers when it's all said and done? 
It sure feels that way, right? I just feel like the last time he was a free agent in 2011, he signed that offer sheet with the Golden State Warriors and then ended up back in Clipperland. But this time, he knows where his bread is buttered. And I know the <laughs> Dallas Mavericks are definitely an option for him, but it just feels like DeAndre will pay back the city that made him, the coach that made him in Doc Rivers. Heck, he's going to meetings with Jamie Foxx. This past <laughs> week in a swanky Malibu restaurant. I'm not sure why Doc Rivers brought Jamie Foxx to a meeting. Because he did that great in person. He does a great no, yeah. Yeah, Doc <laughs> Rivers in person. <laughs> but they've already traded away Spencer Hawes this offseason, their only real backup center. They seem like they're confident that DJ is coming back, and it sure feels that way from this perspective. It's not about money. They're going to give him every dollar in the world. Yeah, he knows his role perfectly staying with the Clippers, but the problem is that he's always going to be number three with that team. It's always going to be Chris Paul and Blake Griffin are the guys that people really, really care about, and DeAndre Jordan is going to have to leave, leave himself to giving it offensive rebounds, alley-oops, and he's just always going to be the number three guy there, no matter what happens. And if he's fine with that, then yeah, he's going to stay with the Clippers, but he hasn't been fine with that before, and I don't think he will be in the future. Lee, what do you think? Do you stay with LA? Yeah, one of the things that he's apparently saying to teams is that he wants a different or a bigger role in the offense, but I don't really know what that that is because he can't shoot, he doesn't really have any moves, he's fantastic at those lobs and those alley-oops and those putbacks and offensive rebounds. So when he does go to another team and says, what can you offer me? I would like the team to say to him, well, what do you actually bring to the table what, you, what we don't already know about, which you do very, very well for the Clippers. So I think his best uh, chance to succeed is to stay in LA, stay in that system with Doc Rivers, Chris and Blake, because he still gets enough touches. Mm -hmm. And I think that if he goes somewhere else, he might be a little bit exposed. Well, I think he got a little bit of a taste when Blake Griffin went out, how much he can be used. And you're right, it's not post-ups, that's for mm -hmm. sure. It's just pick and roll after pick and roll after pick and roll and just more of that and not sure. going through Blake. And he got a little bit of a taste of that, and maybe he likes that. And, and yeah, maybe he just doesn't feel appreciated. But at the same time, I think Doc loves him. And yes, he doesn't allow him to go into the post and do that type of thing. But I, I hope that they've developed enough of a relationship where he doesn't look at another opportunity and say, hmm, I need some more touches, because that's not him. He is in a great position, though, yeah. heading into free agency, because mm -hmm. his team, they're capped out. They have, you already said it, they have no real backup plan if he goes. No. They have an owner that has deep pockets. They are a good team that wants to win now when you've got Chris Paul as your leader. He is in a great spot because he can just say if he wants to, give me max money. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Yeah. And he, that can, owner, he can do that if he wants to. And that owner is going to be part of the meeting, apparently, when, when they right. meet tonight along who, who with Who isn't going to be part of that meeting? No, it's just those two. <laughs> oh. Jamie was earlier in the Right, meeting. right, okay, right, right. Yeah. What about the, the, the <laughs> Dallas Mavericks are an, an interesting suitor, though for possibly DeAndre Jordan to go to. And that's kind of where I think he's going to end up because he's the kind of center that the Mavericks like. He's super athletic, and like we've said, he catches a lot of alley-oops, and that's kind of been what the Mavericks have used the center for for the past couple of seasons. It's been Tyson Chandler and Brandon Wright for the past couple of years, and I actually think that if uh, DeAndre Jordan were to end up in Dallas, it'll probably be Tyson Chandler that somehow works his way to the Clippers, and they're just going to trade spots. I do think Dallas makes sense for him. He's a Texas guy. They are a younger team. He's a nice fit next to Dirk because all he's going to have to do is cover up for Dirk's mistakes, block some shots, and then he's going to have a ton of room down low. I think DeAndre is personally going to end up at Dallas Mavericks. Especially because, as you say, he might be a little worried about being a third wheel. Yeah, exactly. Right. If he is worried about that, then it could be exactly. a Exactly, and it'll be a huge piece for the Mavericks. All right, let's jump from the West uh, over to the East. Uh, one team who has a whole lot of free agents, so we maybe don't think a lot of them are leaving, is the Cleveland Cavaliers. What are the Cavs going to look like at the end of this entire free agency? A lot of these guys unrestricted, a few restricted guys. What do you think? They're going to look like whatever Bron Bron says they're going to look like. Okay. I mean, I, this is what happened last year when Dan Gilbert flew to meet LeBron and convinced him to come back to Cleveland, Braun knew that he sort of holds the power, that he can opt out and say, sit back and say, hey, these are the type of guys I want on my team. Show me that we're gonna be a championship contender for years to come. So I believe LeBron's sitting back and looking at these free agents and saying, Caleb, want that guy. Tristan Thompson, mm -hmm. want that guy. Jared Smith, uh, maybe want that guy. I'll take that guy. Yeah, I'll take that guy. <laughs> uh, Shumpert as well. I, I feel like we're gonna see a very similar team than we did last year. And again, this team was knocking on the door, two wins away from the championship without a healthy Kyrie and Kevin Love. Kevin Love's the, obviously the big one there. I don't think he's gonna leave Cleveland, but I wonder if he does just take some cursory calls from other teams just to see what else is out there and what other roles 
teams are offering. But I think that LeBron's sway is going to get him back there because they were so close. Obviously, he was injured in the finals and couldn't play. But I think if Kevin Love, especially when you look at the second half of the season when they had all their players healthy, their offense was fantastic. And the finals, maybe they would have been different, maybe not if they were all healthy. Who knows? But I think Kevin Love wants at least one more shot at it with LeBron and Kyrie Irving. Yeah. The questions, it feels like, with this team are what type of contract does Love sign? Does he go with a LeBron? What we expect from a LeBron, that, that two-year, again, the second-year option. Does he do that? Mm -hmm. Or does he go full on? What he said when he was coming over when that trade happened with the Wolves was, look, I'm very likely I'd love to get that five-year max money locked that in. That'll be interesting. But then the Tristan Thompson question comes up too. Is it going to be weird to pay both these guys sort of huge amounts of money when they play to some extent the same position here? Is there enough minutes to go around? But I am with you. I think this team is almost in a weird way boring to talk about because I think yeah. all those guys are going to come back. Maybe not Shumpert. Maybe they were two wins from a title, and they can basically bring back the same team. So I kind of think they'll do the same. Maybe they'll tinker. Maybe it'll be Mike Dunleavy instead of J.R. Smith. Mm -hmm. But we'll basically be saying this, seeing the same team because they were two wins from a title after having a super drama-filled year. You have to assume that playing a whole season with the same guys, oh, yeah. knowing what you're getting into, it's just going to be a scenario where Kevin Love can say, hey, maybe I was the missing piece. Maybe we win a title if I stay in court. And LeBron is a huge proponent of that sort of the chemistry and maintaining the same roster. Yeah. He knows that's how you win mm -hmm. games, that, that steady type of organization. So he just wants to bring everybody back and give it one more go. And as you mentioned, Kevin Love doesn't necessarily have to lock himself into four years. No, no. Hey, he'll say, hey, <laughs> Uh, you know, a year with an option, and, and if it doesn't work out, okay, adios. And, and maybe that's what they were talking about at the pool when LeBron met Kevin Love, and Kevin Love <laughs> had to pick up his own chair and pull it over. If you have had a meeting with anyone in the last three or four or five days, Tass Mellis knows every single detail. All the deets. It's unbelievable. That was a wicker chair that he pulled over. <laughs> Not great for outdoor weather. I thought wicker was perfect thought it was for pretty good. It had a cushion on it. Uh, okay. <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> See you in Cleveland. Look, we'll come back. We'll debate who is staying put and maybe who could be on the move come July 1st. You're watching the starters. Back with starters. Quick look at some other notable free agents. We feel like a lot of these guys might be staying put with their team. Jimmy Butler there with the Bulls. Draymond Green says he's only going to meet with the Warriors. Hopefully that goes well and he would stick with Golden State. Same thing with Marcus Gasol. He's only going to talk to the Grizz by all reports. You see the other names there. Brandon Knight, Lopez, Kawhi Leonard we talked about a little bit. Dwayne Wade and Dragic. That's sort of interesting with the Heat. Let's get to a few eyes to maybe keep your eye on. Wesley Matthews with the Blazers. Monty Ellis have it all with the Mavs and two Hawks, and then we've included, and I'm a little surprised by this, Joe Johnson, not a free agent test. As we mentioned, a lot of these guys are gonna stay put. I think Joe Johnson will be a guy in the next few days that's gonna be on the move via a trade. The Hornets, the Pistons, the Grizzlies have all expressed interest over the last few weeks, apparently. I think the Grizzlies works out perfectly for Joe Johnson. They have been so desperate looking for a guy who would score off the wing. I think that round two series against the Golden State Warriors would have been so different if Joe Johnson were there taking those shots. Jeff Green obviously didn't work out the way they wanted. And there's a deal to be had there. Yes, we sort of kind of mock Joe Johnson's contract a lot of the time, but the guy's a shot maker. He recently made a lot of game-winning shots. Mm -hmm. Last year against the Raptors, if you remember in the playoffs, hit game-winning shots. He could do that for the Memphis Grizzlies. And if you, if you throw in Jeff Green, you throw in Matt Barnes, you throw in a couple small contracts with the Grizzlies, it actually works out to grab Joe Johnson. Those, those talks have apparently broken off, but I feel like he'd be a great fit there. And no contract in the NBA is untradeable. No. Especially if this gets As we saw twice. with Joe Johnson already. Yeah, no, it's it's all this is one year. Less. It's one year yeah, left. Exactly, it's not yeah. Darren Williams two years left, so th that's dramatically different. All right, Joe Johnson, someone to watch. Yes, not a free agent, but possible trade. What do you got? Wesley Matthews, Lee. Keeping your eye on him. Yeah, every team in the league right now needs a 3 and D guy, and I think Wesley Matthews is one of the best at that. We know he's a great three-point shooter. He's a 40% career from downtown, and defensively, he's pretty good. He really Rarely gets outbodied and he can actually defend that same sort of player at the other end. What now, about the injury? Well, that's the big question. He's obviously coming off that torn Achilles tendon which happened in March, but he's been blasting a few Instagrams showing that he's <laughs> working out looking fantastic. He will obviously need to pass a physical, but the other big question is he's seeking around 15 million per season for three, four, five, whatever it is. That, to me, is probably a little bit out of his range. I don't think he's going to get quite that, but I think he could get around 12 to 14. I just think a lot of teams will like him because of what he brings to the table. And also, he's a great team guy, mm -hmm. apparently, as well. I think teams well, you know value it. that. I don't even think the 15's all that much, though. Agree. And, Agree. and I think we're going to see with some of these contracts, like be it Tobias Harris, Chris Middleton, you know, maybe Wesley Matthews, 
you're going to see these type of numbers. At first, you're going to go, whoa, 15 million. Mm. Again, we keep stressing this. When that cap goes up over the next two years, yeah. that 15 million is not going to look bad at all. And if you have cap space this summer before everybody has cap space, you might as well spend it. That's what Zach Lowe's been saying over at Grantland all week. And it's basically true because when everybody has cap space, it's not as valuable. Right, which a lot of teams next yeah, year ton of in teams. theory are going to have. You got Monte Ellis, so you think he's leaving the Dallas Mavericks? I don't know if he's leaving the Dallas Mavericks, more than likely, but I do think he's going to be a pretty hot name in free agency. A couple of teams are already interested, the Heat, Kings, Pacers, and Hawks, and I really do think he could help all those teams because you still have to play offense in the NBA. We talk a lot about efficiency and stuff. But basically every team runs pick and roll, and Monte Ellis is one of the better guys at running pick and roll. He's going to be able to score a ton of points. He's still pretty young because he came into the league as a young guy. I think he's going to be a guy, probably the best creator available on the market. Teams are going to look at him and say, well, maybe we lost out on Dwayne Wade. Let's take Monte Ellis. Right, yeah. possibly. I, and again, I go back to the Hawks, Millsap and Carroll. I, I'm just intrigued whether the Hawks can sort of almost package them together <laughs> when, it, when it comes to this free agency period because – if they don't, if they go max for a guy like Millsap, they're gonna have some problems with their cap space of trying to keep a guy like Damari Carroll. But you know, maybe they convince Millsap to say, you know, look, maybe it's a 16 million we're starting at here. Maybe we then have space for a guy like Damari Carroll. It's sort of with all these guys, you're like, you're weighing the, the financial benefits or their interests to like the success of a team. Mm -hmm. So it's always sort of a fine line there. It'll be interesting to see what the Hawks do. They say they're the Spurs of the East. I mean, this is a good example <laughs> good to find out whether they, this is a huge test. whether they can do it. Somebody's right. going to pay Demario. Yeah. I would imagine he will get paid as well. But nine, 10 million, something like that? Easy. Possibly. All right, we got to take a break. One more, but when we come back, bold free agency predictions. We're watching the starters. Back with the starters, here's a look at tonight's schedule on NBA TV. Don't go anywhere. The free agent fever is just getting started immediately following the starters here. And then tomorrow, oh boy, all day long basically <laughs> breaking down all of the movement. Hopefully we get some trades and all that fun. That will include the starters at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Before we go here, let's put everyone on the spot. Bold predictions for this free agency period coming up. What do you got? I think Dwayne Wade. Leaves Miami. Really? What? Mm. I think he goes somewhere else. I disagree with that one. What do you got? I think by the end of free agency, DeMarcus Cousins is going to be a Laker. Okay. I and think Kevin Love announces he's coming back to Cleveland via a video on social media. Empty frame, a pool. Kevin Love walks in with his wicker chair, puts it down. You knew I was coming back. There it is. I think someone will <laughs> complain about another player getting too much money. That's my prediction. Keep it here on NBA TV for Free Agent Fever. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for joining us, folks. And remember, there is nothing free about free agency. Embrace the night, people. <laughs>